my darling Fumi Nation, how are you? How are we? My name is Fumi De Salovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you are so very welcome indeed. Here we are with another outtake <laughs> from Cat Williams' interview with Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. I missed it. I missed it. Well, it was a two and a half hour segment. I missed it until you fabulous Fumination brought it to my attention. And from there, I began to get all kinds of, yes, news. Well, you know what? Let me roll it for you for what Kat said about Oprah. I don't know if you saw this, but Taraji P. Henson got It's going to be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's going to be. A, it's gonna be it, it, the greatest thing floating in 2024. I might be out of business. The words. No way. In a, in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch. Watch. <sighs> God's people ain't that few. Yeah. <laughs> Prince. Apparently, Oprah is setting out to destroy Cat Williams. She's had a very rough month, to say the very least. And might I say that I am just kind of Mm. I um, read a lot of your comments in the last episode I did, and I was very happy, impressed even, because this it's so important to always stay in touch with what other people are thinking. A good 80% of you said, Fumi, aside from the fact that Taraji might have gone off and said her thing, to be very honest between me and you, we are tired of this depressing story. It's been done before, and when it was done, it was at its best. This should never have been made, and a musical of all things, that's not for me. A lot of you said it. You didn't like the fact that it was remade, one, and that it was, it was not aligned with the way a lot of you are feeling today. You don't want to be depressed. You don't want to be, what was the word that, that kept coming up? Traumatized. You don't want to be traumatized. I had to respect it. And I think that you are right. I think that it's very, it, it is very appropriate to say that perhaps this was just too much. It's too much. It's not a happy film. And because Oprah is with the higher elites, has to be Steven Spielberg and the like. She has a say. And it was very ill-advised to have remade this color purple. It was very ill-advised. I don't know why they thought that they should go ahead and do another color purple film. Uh, Oprah, she's a little bit older. She has to be in tune with the young ones out there. With the younger generation they want to see happy they want to see color they want to see positivity they want to see black excellence they want to see them achieving things they don't want to see themselves repressed in that mommy hole not at all and that is i think where the situation is they consider her a handler for the higher elites and cat has been calling her out now I'm finding out for years. It's going to be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's going to be. A, it's gonna be it, it, the greatest thing floating in 2024. I might be out of business. The words. No way. In a, in a whole different realm of business. <laughs> Oprah coming next. <laughs> <laughs> the thing for me is that I don't think you can destroy somebody who's not afraid. Kat is not afraid. Kat does not rely on Hollywood for anything. He is self-funded. If he never works in Hollywood again, he doesn't care. I think this bomb was the perfect storm. I'm talking about Cat Williams, the Cat Williams interview. I think it was the perfect storm. And sometimes you don't see it coming for you. But it was already set in motion when you started with a film that basically the America didn't want. 
black America did not want. Now, yesterday I had told you how I felt about the whole thing. I felt that the film was derailed because there were so many complaints that were justified. We were doing rehearsal and they put us all in the same space. Like we didn't have our own dressing rooms at the time and they did not give us... <laughs> Sorry, Miss O. We didn't have no food. She had no idea. She, she didn't had know what she was going on. on. She, she had no idea. Like, I heard about it. No, yeah. And you corrected it yeah, for us. Yeah, I You corrected it. Didn't I call you? Yes. I and I was like, Miss O, we got to fix this. <laughs> and she said, say less. And was it not fixed? And fix? that's what I appreciated. The complaints were justified. It's just the timing and the place. It backfired. It ricocheted. And it became self-sabotage. Whereas if you had let it go, Oprah would have been responsible for the whole demise if we had left it for what it was and just continue with that train stay professional because it's in your contracts of what you signed because Taraji had said that she almost didn't do color purple because they had to renegotiate this that and the third so here's the thing once it's been negotiated and you're on set game on finish it be done having said that color purple was a perfect storm the perfect storm to now shed light onto Oprah in a way that I have never, ever looked at Oprah before. Never, ever. I've never looked at her that way. I've always felt that she was very, very decent human being that was out for the best. But Kat says that's not the case. And Kat is not the only one. For this interview that Kat did, it had to take a lot of courage. To really come out and call everybody out because nobody has stood in his face to say that what you are saying is a lie. Not one single person. I will say personally, if I had been Oprah and you brought the color purple of which you loved you are passionate about, you've done the film 1985, it's been on Broadway and you are bringing it out. Then when I say this is my film of everyone, because they know that you had hands in it as well as Steven Spielberg, but this was a black film. This was an all black cast. I personally would have made sure that my cast, not only taken care of, but over and above. Because you see, Oprah is being accused of not really taking care of actors, black actors, black actresses. And so I sat back and I said, if I was doing this film, I would have also gone over their contracts to make sure that they got the very best. That they got the very best in money, in service, on the set, off the set. There would not have been any room or place for any kind of mishap and i would have been on the set to make sure that everybody is happy because we know how things go on set and i'm going to stand by that because tyler perry reveals he once pays cicely tyson a million for one day of work I only say this publicly because she said it. I paid Cicely Tyson a million dollars for one day of work. Yeah. Because when actors age, get to a certain age, they, they're pretty much discarded. Uh, Taraji P. Henson talks about me paying her $500,000 years ago to set her quote. I recently paid two black women who've been in the business for 25 years a million dollars because even when their agents were asking for less than half of that because I understand the working actor. So do you see what I'm saying? It can be done. It can happen. It should have happened. You should have micromanaged that film. If you went out of your way to get it produced. That was a mistake. That was a mistake that I can clearly put onto Oprah's lap. Because Oprah said that, you know, Warner Brothers handles this, Warner Brothers handles that. This movie was important because it created a space and roles for a group of black women. Yes, that, and I would uh, just like to say about this whole Tarai, you know, I, I heard I was trending yesterday uh, because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself 
that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So whenever I heard that there was something that people needed, I'm not in charge of the budget because that's Warner Brothers. You mm -hmm, know, that's mm -hmm. the way the studio system works. And we as producers, everybody gets their salary. That's negotiated by your team. And so whenever I heard there was an issue or there was a problem, there was a problem with the cars or there was a problem with the food, I would step in and do whatever I could to make it right. And yet Warner Brothers did not handle the cars, the food, the trailers. You had enough influence to go in and handle it. But what I feel should have also been done, not only did you handle it, you should have flipped that script all the way back and dealt with Warner Brothers. Or are they too big for you, Oprah? That is why this is ricocheted. And that is why we have to look at Kat and say, hmm, he just might have a point. Because cut aside, this color purple was a glaring example of what you're being accused of. It should never have been a situation of it being handled. It should never been a situation where your actors were so upset that it spilled out onto the campaign to push the very film that you are producing. It means that you make sure that everything is copacetic. It's like having a dinner party. You want to make sure that the servings, the food, the chef, the people at the gate, security, everybody's happy. Everybody has eaten. Everybody is ready to go if you have to shimmy shimmy up to them you do it why because you need them to take care of this baby so that did not make sense to me and in the back and forth of all of this where the taraji and you are responsible in a way you are more responsible than taraji because taraji is an actor and she wants to get paid she wants to be treated as such of which again i didn't understand because if it was all taken care of, Taraji, why did you bring it up? Why did you bring it up? You should have just left it. But in bringing it up, I look also now to Oprah and also the studios. Are they aligned? Was this something that the studio said, well, we'll give you this, Oprah, we'll do this or whatever, but we'll still treat your people like trash? Where is the respect for you, Oprah, if the studios can treat the actors in this light? Is it that they don't have respect for you or that you are aligned with this kind of behavior? I'm just observing. I am just observing. I am, I am really observing. A lot of you said the film should never have been made. Never, ever. It was the worst decision ever. Oprah, that was your decision. You pushed for it. You were promoting the film. Because I know that you were sitting down when the girls were talking. And I know in your deepest heart, you said to yourself, I wish to God Almighty that I had never put this cast up that I had never pushed for this cast, that perhaps we should have gone with somebody else. But that's what I'm talking about. This has turned out to be the perfect storm. The perfect storm where everything aligned and we could never have foreseen it like this. It was meant to be. And I think that the way Cat Williams stormed up in there to Shannon Sharp for Club Shea Shea, got the wheels turning on something that has been going on for a while. Everybody makes mistakes. I think it comes to a point where they become repeated mistakes and you get away with it and then somebody does speak up. You see, what I love about Kat is that he went for an interview of which I wish Taraji had done because Taraji was 110% correct, I'll repeat. She was 110% to air her grievances. The thing is, the way Kat did it 
was like a match made in heaven because all the attention was focused on him. It wasn't focused on any albums. It wasn't focused on any films. He wasn't out there promoting anything. He just came out raw and gave it to us raw. And that was why we paid attention. We could not, not look away. And that was the difference between Taraji for me and Kat. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, hit the notification button and let me know down in the comments.